Congresswoman Cori Bush explaining why she should spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on private security while still pushing to defund the police. Ironic that she represents St. Louis, a place with some of the highest murder rates in the country. We'll get into that later. Sound bites like these, though, are a dream come true for Republican lawmakers and ad makers. Joining us now, Tara Palmieri, co author of the Politico Playbook, Washington's most read political newsletter. Uh, Tara, good to see you. Uh, that happened this morning. How many different Republicans sent you that clip by this afternoon? That's true. I mean, the NRSCC, our sources say, are already cutting ads using that interview. It's catnip um, for Republicans, and it's dangerous for Democrats as they head into the midterms because swing districts um, have found that this defund the police rhetoric is not popular among Democrats, among women who are swing voters and sometimes vote Republican or Democrat. Um, you know, you saw in a recent election that the progressive candidate did not make it. And the Biden administration is now touting that the future candidates in, up for the uh, midterm election should be more like Biden, a moderate, rather than a progressive, uh, like a Bernie Sanders or the squad. Um, so yeah, defund the police is extremely unpopular. And as we know, the crime rates are through the roof right now. So this is the last thing that Nancy Pelosi, uh, Biden, anybody wants talking Tim, about. Tim like, Ryan, who wants to run for uh, Senate in Ohio, et cetera. And as you point out, uh, the soundbite doesn't really affect Cori Bush. She comes from a a Biden plus 25 or plus 30 district, maybe even higher than that in right. St. Louis. Uh, but it really affects and can be used against uh, Democrats running in these swing districts is that if the White House is going to have any chance of helping them keep the House they need. Uh, Jen Psaki sort of played cleanup on aisle five. Here was her response. The president has been crystal clear that he opposes defunding the police. Uh, he has said that throughout the cam his campaign for office. His record over the last several decades has made that clear. He has proposed increased funding for law enforcement and the COPS program, increased funding from his predecessor, who was, as you might note or be aware of, a Republican. So I'd note that his record is pretty clear on this. How does that play, though, with the progressive left? I mean, they hate hearing that, right? And they're also trying to please, the White House is trying to keep them happy right now as they try to pass, pass a bipartisan infrastructure bill uh, that they know they need to show that Biden has been a uh, bipartisan, uh, moderate, uh, president who can work with both sides of the aisle. They need a piece of legislation to show that they can work with Republicans. Progressives don't love this because they want it to be bigger, right? And right now, the Democrats need every vote they can get. Um, and they also have a reconciliation bill. This is the budget coming um, at the same time. And again, the, the fear right now is not necessarily losing Republicans. It's losing the left. Right, yeah. Um, they, they... And these are bills that Biden proposed. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's sort of an unusual thing. You talked about the infrastructure bill, the bipartisan infrastructure bill. We didn't plan it this way, but uh, as you, people were looking through it, they found uh, this gem in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Washington Free Beacon. Infrastructure bill would require alcohol monitors for all new cars. Advanced monitoring systems track blood alcohol concentration and can prevent motor vehicle operation. Uh, noteworthy, number one, that it says booze, not pot or drugs. But number two, uh, what other crazy things are in this infrastructure <laughs> bill of 2,700 pages? Like you said, it's 2,700 pages. It's a massive pork bill, right? It's that, That's just how this works. Um, I <laughs> doubt all of these senators or House members will even read all of it. Uh, it's an opportunity for some people to put their agendas in there, uh, slip in an amendment or two. Um, this is just a massive spending bill, right? We said yeah. it's all about bri bri bridges and tunnels, but it's a pork bill. I mean, that's essentially Fair. what it is. Well, and everyone is a woman, trying to a get woman a piece who calls things the way they are in Washington uh, <laughs> is a is a rare thing. Uh, I think Nancy Pelosi once said we have to pass something before we can figure out what's inside it. Tara, you've got a True. newsletter to write uh, early in the morning. Politico's playbook yes. uh, comes out bright and early in your inbox. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. All right, coming up. Florida is unquestionably the epicenter of the new COVID surge. We're taking a deep dive into the statistics about that. Plus, the waiting game. Can New York Governor Andrew Cuomo and his brother survive this political and new media firestorm? What's next there? Then, the backlash from realtors over the new eviction moratorium. Plus this, 
the headline at the New York Times that's causing a lot of people to wonder about Osama bin Laden. Why? Next. Tonight on Banfield, reveal.